Kim, and today we're going to be talking about trigonometry, specifically general solutions. Now I know as soon as we hear the words general solutions, the alarm bells tend to go off. But what's important to realize is that when we get to this section, we're not starting over, we're not reinventing the wheel. All that we're doing is we're building up with a few little steps on things that we've already done. For example, let's look at the sine graph. Here we've got one revolution of our sine graph. When we go theta units into our function, we get a certain output. In this case, it's 0.4. Now, when we go 180 minus theta units, we're going to get that same output, 0.4. Now, all that we're doing when it comes to general solutions is we're saying, yes, that's, that's accurate, that's good. However, it's not accurate 100% of the time. Remember that our sine function, our cos function, and our trig functions, they're going on for inf to infinity. So, yes, we're going to get that output at 0.4, those two times. However, do you see how when we add one revolution, we're going to get that same output at both points, at that first theta point and at that 180 minus theta point for our sine graph. So it's important for mathematicians to be accurate. And for that very reason, all that we have to do is add a 360k. Now that k is an integer that's saying, okay, it doesn't matter how many revolutions we're going to add to this function. When we add 360 degrees, we're going to get that exact same y output. So for our sine function, we add 360 degrees for one period. Same with our cos function. And for our tan function, we know that our period is only 180 degrees. Right, so now we get this slightly new concept called a reference angle. As we said, when we have reduction formulae, we might have two angles that give out the same y output. However, our reference angle is dealing with an angle that is in the first quadrant, which we're then going to use to find our general solutions. In order to do this, we're going to use our cast diagram. Now, it's important to note that our cast diagram is very similar. In fact, it's the exact same thing as our functions. It's just represented in a little bit of a different way to show all of our functions on one picture. So to find our reference angle, we're going to plug the y value output into our inverse of um, our trig function function to get the reference angle. So for example, we had sine of theta equals 0.4. Now to find our reference angle, we're going to say, okay, sine inverse of 0.4 of our y value gives us our reference angle. So that reference angle in our first quadrant is going to be theta. In our second uh, um, quadrant, our theta is going to be 180 minus that reference angle. In the third quadrant, same concept, 180 plus our reference angle gives us theta. And in our fourth quadrant, 360 minus our reference angle will give us theta. So let's put this together in the kind of question that you might see in a test. Right, so here we have two sine of something in the bracket, minus 0.1 equals 0.4. Great, so what we want to do at first is to get all of our whole numbers, all of our constants on one side, and isolate our trig functions. Cool, so now we've narrowed this down to two sine of something gives us 0.5. To simplify that to just sine, we divide both sides by two. Now this value over here, what you see in the bracket, and what you see on the outside here, is what we're going to be using to find our reference angles and our theta. We've put our y value, our output, 
into our inverse function to find our reference angle. And we're going to equate that reference angle to what was in the bracket. But we can see here that we got a positive number. Now what this is going to look like on our sine function, something like this, we've got 0 0.25, which might be over there and might be over there, our output. So we can see we're going to be dealing with our first two quadrants from 0 to 90 and from 90 to 180. Fantastic. So let's set that up. Here we have quadrant 1, 2 theta plus 30 equals that reference angle. And in quadrant 2, 2 theta plus 30 equals 180 minus that reference angle because we've gone 180 minus theta units from 180. Great, so to simplify that, we're going to get down to 2 theta equals 14.48 minus 30 plus 360k, because that 360k is now accounting for the solutions all the way to infinity and all the way to negative infinity. But as you can see here, we've got 2 theta. Now it's very important to know that that 2 theta, we wanted to leave it as 2 theta until the very end, because we're now going to divide the whole line by 2. Now the reason why we do this is because we know from our grade 10 and 11 concepts that when we've got sine of 2 theta, that means that we're compressing two revolutions in what would usually be the space of one. So we're now adding 180k because we've divided 360 by 2 because that um, angle is going to be seen 180 degrees later. Fantastic. So now we see that our one angle is negative 7.76 plus 180k. We're going to do the exact same thing for our second quadrant. And we're going to see that our theta equals 67.76 plus 180k. Awesome. So that's pretty much it for general solutions. But they might rein in the scope and ask you for part A of your question, find the general solution. And then part B, they might say, okay, let's crop the image back. Now, in this case, we want to see, okay, just theta for negative 90 to 90 degrees. This is where that k comes into our calculation. That k we said was an integer that is just a multiple of 360 degrees that is our revolution. So now they want to see if we draw our function, we've said that this is going to go on to infinity and on to negative infinity. Now, what happens when we limit it to 90 and negative 90? Where are we going to see that angle happening again? So, with the first quadrant that we dealt with, where we said that theta was just our reference angle, we saw that negative 7.76 was one of our angles. If we add 180k, but we put negative 1 into our k, and we put 1 into our k, we see that that's going to fall outside of our scope. That's smaller than 90, and it's bigger than 90. The same thing is going to happen when we look at our second quadrant value. We saw when we didn't add 180 to this and we just had our reference angle, our theta, we got 67.76. Now that falls within our scope. If we subtracted or added 90 degrees, we would have gotten values again that fall outside of our scope. So we know that for that question, our answer is just going to be this over here and this one over here. You might get a question that looks a little bit different where they ask us to find the intercepts of two functions. This is exactly the same as what we've been doing. There's no need to stress. We're going to be doing the exact same process. So they want to know at which values is sine going to equal cos. We know that we're going to have the y value of sine equal the y value of cos at these points over here. 
So to find our general solution, because if these graphs continue to infinity, we want to see when is that going to happen again. We want to get this as one statement that we can solve. So let's divide both sides by cos. That's going to make our lives a little bit simpler, because now when we do that, we're just going to get tan of x equals 1. Now that's something that's a lot easier to work with. If we put that into our reference angle, we'll see that that's just going to be 45. Now we know with tan that our period is 180, so we're not going to have two quadrants that we have to look at. We can just say, okay, well theta is going to be 45 degrees plus 180k. This section can be a little bit tricky because what's important for us to remember is that we're just using all of the sections in maths that we've used before. For example, quadratics can come up. Here you see something that is sine squared theta minus 2 sine of theta plus 1. That looks like a mouthful. However, if we just substituted x into this, we could see, okay, x squared minus 2x plus 1 that's something we've been doing since grade 9, and it's a little bit easier to work with. So it's important to remember that all of math comes together um, in our general solutions, like this uh, quadratic function, as well as with our compound angle formulae that can come in, our double angle formulae, and our trig identities. When we realize that we're just building up from old concepts and things that we've been doing since grade 9, you'll have this section in the bag.